Have you ever wondered where the television signal you are watching is coming from? Welcome to True North. Good evening and welcome to Maine Watch. Welcome to From the Vault, a celebration of 60 years of Maine public television. It's all about country music tonight with three selections from the archives. We have some great old performances from some Maine legends, one of them known more for swimming than singing. In the second half of the show, we will go to 2007 for a segment from the history program, Maine Experience. At one time, Bangor was known as the Nashville of the North, and in the segment called Maine's Radio Cowboys, we will take a nostalgic look at the days when live country music was a mainstay of local radio and featured such singers as Hal Lone Pine, Gene Hooper, Betty Cody, Curly O'Brien, and many more. Then we will travel to 2015 for a look at Maine's Country Music Hall of Fame in Mechanic Falls, where many of the performers we will have seen are honored. But first, we will go back to 1978 for the Dick Curlis Summer Special. Arguably one of Maine's most famous country singers, he was propelled onto the national stage with his 1965 hit, A Tombstone Every Mile, and had 22 top 40 hits in his career. In this show, Dick sings a few songs, tells some stories, and presents a couple other performers, including a 16-year-old Tina Welch, who performs her newly released single, Keep an Eye Out for Charlie, which Cashbox magazine called a single to watch in 1978. And we will visit with a performer that many of you might have seen if you took a trip to Rockport Harbor in the 70s and 80s. It is, of course, Andre the Seal. A reminder that you can watch this episode or previous episodes of From the Vault anytime you like by going to the From the Vault playlist at youtube.com slash main public. All right, the train is about to depart, so let's hop on and go back to 1978 for the Dick Curlis Summer Special. The Maine Public Broadcasting Network proudly presents the Dick Curlis Summer Special. Dick's special guests are Tina Welch, Harry Goodridge, and Andre the Seal. Now here's the baron of country music, Dick Curlis. Now Casey Jones, he was a mighty man, but now he's resting in the promised land. Kind of music he could understand, was an eight-wheel driver under his command. He made the freight train boogie, yeah, all the time. He made the freight train boogie as he rolled down the line. Well, now, when that fireman started ringing the bell, everybody along the line could tell. Casey Jones, he was the come to town on the six eight wheeler that was burning the ground. He made the freight train boogie, yeah, all the time. He made the freight train boogie as he rolled down the line. Yeah. Man, but now he's resting in the promised land. Kind of music he could understand was an eight wheel driver under his command. He made the freight train boogie, yeah, all the time. He made the freight train boogie as he rolled down the line. Now, when that farm started ringing the bell, everybody along the line could tell. Casey Jones, he was to come into town on the six eight wheeler that was burning the ground. He made the freight train boogie, yeah, all the time. He made the free train boogie as he rolled down the line. Yeah.
welcome to our summer special. Get a beautiful day. Hope that you're gonna enjoy the show. I have some great guests that you heard. And this is a treat for me, especially to be here, my own place, Bangor, Maine. And as you can see, I got a thing about trucks and trains. And I have uh, found out uh, through my career, being so fortunate that uh, life uh, has some twists and turns that you can't anticipate. And I'm awful glad that I can sit here and say that uh, mine has changed drastically for the good. And this song really states it really in a, in a way, and I know a lot of you will be familiar with this. It's called Life is Like a Mountain Railroad. <laughs> Life is like a mountain railroad With an engineer that's brave We must make the run successful From the cradle to the grave Watch the curves, look out for the tunnels Never falter, never fail Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. Blessed Savior, thou shalt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in thy praise for a burn. Blessed Savior, thou shalt guide us Till we reach that blissful shore Where the angels wait to join us In thy praise forevermore Where the angels wait to join us In thy praise forevermore Notice the most important thing about that is the engineer. Hope you liked it. My very special guest coming up here is a lady I've known. You're not going to believe this. For years. I've known her for years. Since she's nine years old. And I'm not going to tell you how old she is. You'll have to just figure that out. She's a very lovely, talented young lady that's in all of my shows, just about all of them. And she's doing so good now in Day Dan Records. This record was produced by Danny Davis, of Danny Davis and the Nashville Brass in Nashville, Tennessee. I think you're gonna like it. You're gonna love her, I know. It's Tina Welch singing, Keep an Eye Out for Charlie. Keep an eye out for Charlie I've got a feeling that he's out tonight Keep an eye out for Charlie Don't let him see you holding me tight Always 
looking over my shoulder Cause Charlie thinks I'm still his I always keep one eye open Even in the middle of a kiss Cause Charlie's still crazy about me Though I told him we were through And I'm afraid of what might happen If Charlie catches me with you So keep an eye out Wasn't that nice? Pretty song, pretty girl, pretty setting. Tina Welsh and Lucky Charlie. You know, the next uh, couple of guests that I have are dear friends of mine, and they live down in a part of Maine that's very dear to my heart. In fact, it was my first record. Do you remember these 78s? I put my first record out, I was about 18 years old, on the 78s, on the standard label, and it was called The Coast of Maine. A lot of you folks might remember it, I hope so. Hal Lone Pine recorded the thing, a few other people since then. Very dear to my heart, so before we meet our special guests here, my dear friends Harry and Andre, I'd like to take a little ride and I'd like to ask you to come along with me. And while we're going, we will see if we can get this old jewel to work here and play this record that started me in show business way back in 1950. And come ride with me by automobile down to the coast of Maine. There's a winding lane on the coast of Maine that is wound around my heart. There's a sweetheart standing by an old boat landing, sighing cause we had to part. But you cry no more when I reach that shore hand in hand again we'll start. Down the winding lane on the coast of Maine that is wound around my heart. But you cry no more when I reach that shore hand in hand again we'll start down the winding lane on the coast of Maine that is wound around my heart here we are at the home of our next very special guest Harry Goodrich, and the harder working part of that dynamic duo, Andre the Seal. Way down in those shanties long Maine's rocky shore, where fishermen gather with stories galore, those salty old sailors have one that is real, the heartwarming story of Andre the Seal. Found on the ledges of Robinson's Rock, a poor little orphan is likely as not. Harry took the pot from the swirling white foam, gave him his name and he gave him a home. And we all love Andre the Seal. We all love Andre the Seal. He's the toast of the coast, and we all like to boast when we talk about Andre the Seal. 
What do you think of Flipper? Mm. Yeah, okay. Nestled away in the green Camden Hills, the harbor at Rockport, little Andre learned well. Growing in leaps and in bounds every day, Harry's best friend was the talk of the bay. The men in the dories and wind jammers too All knew that Andre was nobody's fool He'd jump in the dory, send them end over end And tangle their lines and shout and begin But we all love Andre the seal We all love Andre the seal He's the toast of the coast, and we all like to boast when we talk about Andre the Seal. You're acting numb, Andre. Bang! When winter time comes and the nor'easters blow, he's Boston bound and his heart's all aglow. Four smokes, they're waiting with the biggest round eyes And the whole world is hoping for a little surprise Now it's the ragged old coast back to old Rockport town But Andre will swim it when spring rolls around Back to his harbor to thrill all the crowd And to hear all the children singing out loud we all love Andre the Seal. We all love Andre the Seal. He's the toast of the coast, and we all like to boast when we talk about Andre the Seal. We all love Andre the Seal. We all love Andre the Seal. He's the toast of the coast, and we all like to boast when we talk about Andre the Sea. Hi, as you can see, we're down in Rockport, Maine, the home of Andre the Seal, and what a gorgeous day we have. And I kind of want to take this hat off in honor of Andre, and because I am in his hometown area, and doff that old fisherman's hat here that I've uh, carried with me because I have the owner and my good friend for many years, Harry Goodrich, with me uh, down here in Rockport, Maine. That's a fisherman's hat? That's a fisherman's hat. Oh, I see. Well, I'm glad to know that. I, uh, I guess I'll, if it ever has any young ones, I'd like to have a couple, if you don't mind. Well, listen to him. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll have you I know like this it. has a lot of soul, S-O-L-E, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, all right. Well, well, now that we're here, Harry, yeah. the reason we are here, folks, is because uh, Harry and I... Uh, were insulted about 15 years ago by Andre the Seal when he said that we couldn't sing. And he demonstrated this fact one time about 15 years ago when he went, right? That's what he did. And he said it would take you guys about 15 years to get that song down. So here we are, back again to see if we can try it. And the name of the song is Maggie Blues. And uh, Maestro? Let's see, let's get the bike about the speed. <laughs> <laughs> you simply take a favorite, then you flavor it. Here's an order to a blue harmony. Tell the orchestra to play staccato, and then you jazz a little on the gato. Now the daggy tune is a raggy tune. Pay no attention to the music that they play, but just drive your blues away on the spot. Start this way, getting hot now. The hear that broken time, if just broken time, all around the harmony, charm and me. Every love and all is a love and all. Just move the music that you can't refuse. Just christen it and say I got those When, when you, you and I were young Maggie Blues Will you join me? Yes, the green grove is gone From the hills Maggie Where once The lazy daisy sprung yeah. Now you know the way Tell the band to play And when you hear it say Maggie I got those aggravating Agitating balloons, I'm hating. So I'm stating 
I'm only waiting, waiting to lose those ever loving, ever loving Aggie Blues. Boy, Scooby Dooby. My boy. It's <laughs> good. We're supposed to do this. Yeah, what's we? Andrew know? <laughs> <laughs> What does Andrew know? This is a great place. That's what I say. What does Andrew I say know? for us anyway. Hey, we for got a, anyway. somebody's applauding over yes, there. Yes, we have a little Thank gallery. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Right now, Harry, I have a very special guest that i got to introduce here. I really want to thank you for allowing us to come down and be my part pleasure. of your world. My pleasure. And part of my old world again, which I'm, I'm awful proud to say that I, I know Harry Goodrich and Andrew the Seal, and I've known him since he was a pup. And I mean Andrew. Me? Oh. <laughs> Right now, coming up on the show, we have a very lovely and talented young lady that's done a terrific job the first time on the show here, and she's back again to give us an encore. And this has nothing to do with you or I, Harry. The name of the song is When You Gonna Take Me Home to Meet Your Mama by Tina Welch. This lovely old church in Searsport, Maine, is the perfect setting for me to thank my very special guests and to thank you, and most especially to thank him. Taking in all his mountain air and sunshine Looking at all of God's creation from on high Smelling the sweet grass swaying in the gentle wind Feeling the love in the beauty of his sky For someday on a white cloud he'll be coming back To pick up all his people of this world And I'll keep standing on this mountain rock he's built 
Pray he'll take me through his father's gates of pearl Just take a walk to any piece of high ground A place where you can see for miles and miles each way Think of all the big and little things that's out there And where Jesus on his mountain died that day Keep together, if you can, his love and teaching Be content with his holy word of prayer Love thy neighbor as thyself And we'll all make it to his mountain in his city over there Taking in all his mountain air and sunshine Looking at all of God's creation from on high Smelling the sweet grass swaying in the gentle wind Feeling the love in the beauty of his sky For someday on a white cloud he will Pick up all his people of this world And I'll keep standing on this mountain rock he's built for me And pray he'll take me through his father's gates of pearl Taking in all his mountain air and sunshine Looking at all of God's creation from on high Smelling the sweet grass swaying in the gentle wind Feeling the love in the beauty of his sky For someday on a white cloud he'll be coming back To pick up all his people of this world And I'll keep standing on this mountain rock he's built for me Pray he'll take me through his father's gates of pearl And pray he'll take me through his father's gates of pearl Casey Jones, he was a mighty man, but now he's resting in the promised land. Kind of music he could understand, was an eight-wheel driver under his command. He made the freight train boogie, yeah, all the time. He made the freight train boogie as he rolled down the line. Now when that farmer started ringing the bell, everybody along the line could tell. Casey Jones, he was a coming to town on the six-eight-wheeler that was burning the ground. He made the freight train boogie, yeah. All the time He made the freight train boogie As he rolled down the line The following program is a production of the Maine Public Broadcasting Network. Coming up next on Maine Experience. Maine has a fascinating tradition of country music makers who traveled the state and Canada beginning in the 1920s. 1230 and 1240 time for the Lone Pine Show. Here's the boss of the outfit, the Lone Pine, in person. Well, hello there, everybody. This is your old friend Lone Pine, the noisiest gang in radio, kind of gathered around the old microphone here in Studio A, entertain you for the next half hour. Production of Maine Experience on the Maine Public Broadcasting Network is made possible in part by Elsie Viles, to ensure that the stories of Maine history continue to be told. The Wayne Morong family of Camden. 
and by the members and donors who contribute so generously to the annual operational costs of MPBN. Thank you. Maine in the 1930s, and 2,000 miles from the nearest thing you could call a prairie, Maine cowboys were yodeling up a storm on the radio. Well, hello everybody and say we're all... That's yodeling Ken McKenzie broadcasting from Portland Station WGAN. Ken's daily radio broadcast ran continuously, except for two years away from home to serve in World War II, from 1939 to 1957. Early radio signals traveled far and wide. On Saturday nights, Mainers could pick up the powerful signal from WLS in Chicago, broadcasting the National Barn Dance. <laughs> Everybody everywhere. Yes, indeed. Hello, everybody everywhere. How's mother and dad and the whole family? <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> well, thanks, Jack. But you ought to know this gang was in. To the growing popularity of Hollywood westerns and horse opera featurettes, what was early on described as hillbilly soon became cowboy. The Roman cowboy. Maine's fledgling radio stations picked up on the trend, and by the 1930s were airing their own versions of homegrown cowboy music shows. And although Portland may have been considered Maine's biggest market, Bangor was the Nashville of the North. 12.30 and 12.40, time for the Lone Pine Show. Here's the boss of the outfit, the Lone Pine, in person. Well, hello there, everybody. This is your old friend, Lone Pine, the noisiest gang in radio, kind of gathered around the old microphone here in Studio A, entertain you for the next half hour. <laughs> so pull up the easy chairs, the loudspeakers, and listen to the noisiest gang in radio. <laughs> Bangor, Maine, in the 40s, between 40 and 52 when television came in was a hotbed of live country music on the radio every day except Sunday. But six days a week they would broadcast on th three and sometimes four stations with live bands. And it was unbelievable. There was Ray Little and the Radio Cowboy Show, and there was the Gene Hooper Country Show, and of course uh, Lone Pine Mountaineer and his group called the Noisiest Gang and Radio. There was uh, Curly Glidden and Haymakers before the war, and then of course after the war, and there was Curly O'Brien and the Top Hands. And those were ones that I can remember that were, let's say, based in Bangor and broadcast over one of the Bangor stations every day. The live radio broadcast paid very little, if anything at all. They did, however, provide the opportunity to promote live appearances, and Maine's radio cowboys were constantly on the go traveling throughout Maine and the Canadian Maritimes, wherever the signals reached, appearing in person in theaters, dance halls, granges, and church basements. Anywhere they could draw a crowd. Regardless of where they broadcast from, the one thing they all had in common was a continuing fascination with cowboys, their songs, and the clothes they wore. It was essential to always look the part and to always look sharp. He was a very uh, meticulous dresser. One of the things that separated Dad from some of the other uh, performers that were in his era was the fact that he did dress so sharp. It wasn't anything for him to go spend $1,000 on, on a new suit and a pair of boots. And uh, back in those days, that was a lot of money, you know. My friends, my name is Gene Hooper, 
and I was in radio for 60 some odd years. Gene Hooper, come on out here, Gene. I started when I was 16, ended up when I was almost 80. In a month or so, I'll be 84. My name is Gene Hooper, I'm just here to sing. Some old country songs, and I hope they will bring some sunshine and joy for the young and the old. So huddle up closely round your radio. Gene Hooper and I talked at length, and I said, Gene, who was the first radio cowboy in the Bangor market? And he said, there's no question it was Hal Lone And I said, how do you know that? He said, because I was 13 years old and I used to hear him on the radio. Billed as the Lone Pine Mountaineer, his live daily show aired on WABI out of Bangor and was an instant hit. Others were soon to follow. He came to Machias and my mother took me to a Saturday afternoon matinee. There he was alone with a guitar. And I thought then, well, this is much better than clamming for 30 cents a bushel they got for him <laughs> those days, you know. And uh, after it was all over with, why, and my mother went up to talk to him. And she told him that I sang too, you know. And I got started that way. And then when I was 16, why, my mother let me go if I'd go with Lone Pine, and that's who I went with. This is why we come out of the radio station. You can see the call letters on the door there, WLVZ. And I would think that was 1942, I think. And there was three or four people that wanted the picture taken with us. And on this picture is Betty Cody, Ann Little, uh, Ray Couture, we called him Little Abner. He was our lead guitarist and Hal Lone Pine. When a cowboy's work is done And no self-respecting cowboy radio show was complete without cowgirls. Nothing more a cowboy likes than gaze at the sky so blue. Oh yeah, you had to have a female singer. Yeah. Always. One or two. You know, sometimes it was duets, two girls or something. Always had to have a girl on the shows. Always, yeah. At 16, that's where I joined uh, the Curly and the Country Boys. And I went on WCOU. And I remember when I first started singing, <laughs> the, uh, the, the engineer says, can you, can you kind of sing a little softer? I was blasting out. I thought I had to blast. <laughs> I really loved country music. My mother had an old Victrola and old 78s. And I'd turn it on, boy, and tell him, crank it and listen, and I'd sing with it till my mother would tell me to shut up. <laughs> but then I got interested in the yodel. So my brother Paul brought in uh, th this record of Patsy Montana. And he says, I bet you you can't sing that, Betty, a yodel. So I, I listened to it and everything, and I got right into it. You know, and uh, it was easy for me. And where there were cowgirls, there was bound to be romance. And in the case of the Lone Pine Show, it was the Cody sisters, Betty and Flo. I was 18, going on 19 when I married Pine. The first time I met Flo was before I went in the Army. Before he left for the service, you know, I, I, he was, I was like 15. Lone Pine was broadcasting out of Lewiston at the time on this little station we were standing by WCOU, the only station there and Flo happened to come along with us. I was 18 and she was 15. Like you were at the time when we danced to the walls of the bride. Oh, 
By the 1950s, radio had given way to television. But the old songs live on as fans continue to sing along with the memory of Maine's radio cowboys. As you all know, swing has become the rage. And the cowboys have their own Rips Norton Bronco busting swing song. So everybody sing it and swing it. I'm an old cowhead. Old cowhead. From the Rio Grande. Rio Grande. And my legs ain't bold. Legs ain't bold. And my cheeks ain't tan. Cheeks ain't tan. I'm a cowboy who never saw a cow, never rode the steer, cause I don't know how. Sure ain't fixin' to start in now. Yippee-yi, old cowhead. Yippee-yi, Come on and sing it. I'm an old cowhead. Old cowhead. From the Rio Grande. And I come to town just to hear the band. I know all the songs that the cowboys know about the big corral where the doggies go. I learn them all on the radio. Yippee I okay. Yippee I okay. Well, friends and neighbors, the old time has just run away with us here, and we got to take and say so long to you now. We hope you'll be back the next time we come your way. Until then, remember everybody, keep smiling. <laughs> Welcome to the Maine Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. We're located here in Mechanic Falls, Maine. Our Hall of Famers go back many, many years, beginning in 1978, when the Hall of Fame was first founded by the Maine Country Music Association. Probably the most popular country performer ever to come out of the state of Maine, the one and only Dick Curlis. And Dick, of course, was famous for his number one record, Tombstone Every Mile. If you look behind me a little bit, I'll point up there on the wall, is the original cut of Tombstone Every Mile on the old Allagash Records. It's a stretch of road up north in Maine That's never, ever, ever seen a smile If they buried all the truckers Lost in them woods, there'd be a tombstone Every mile. I played with Dick Curlis back in the 60s, early 60s, when we played at uh, the Thorndike Hotel in Rockland, six nights a week, and it was a lot of fun. The first inductees into the Hall of Fame were, of course, Dick Curlis, and then the one and only Ken McKenzie, who was on Channel 13 television for many, many years in Portland. Here's a little something called Christmas Carols by the Old Pharrell. Let's try it. They'll be singing, gonna be singing, Christmas carols. His accordion player was a young fellow by the name of Dickie Monroe. Dickie was a great accordionist and great comedian. He always would say, I'm going to sing in English, but I'm going to yodel in French. And he did a wonderful job at that. This is the one of the outfits that Ken and Simone, the missus, wore on their television show for all of those years. We also have this microphone, the speakers. Those were used on the last show that was done 
uh, WGME, or in those days, WGAN, in Portland. Wonderful people in the business introduced more new acts to television in the state of Maine than almost anyone. Another very, very famous Maine country performer, the one and only Yodlin Slim Clark. Not only was he a great performer in the state of Maine, but Yodlin Slim Clark also is in the walkway of the stars in Nashville, Tennessee. Lone Pine Radio Ranch. That sign came directly from uh, Denny Bro, who was the son of Lone Pine, and recognized worldwide. And Betty Cody, Betty Cody wasn't just a great lady singer, but she also was a wonderful tailor. She made all of her own outfits. My mom uh, was a uh, little French-Canadian gal that spoke nothing but French when she first started singing. And they used to pop her up on a table and have her sing uh, French songs. And everybody loved it. That sort of got her, uh, got her going in the singing thing. And, uh, and then one day she ran into this tall, handsome cowboy named Hallom Pine. And uh, they fell in love. And uh, she found out she could yodel. <laughs> and uh, they went out on the road. They played everywhere. We'd drive through town in a big old Cadillac with a big speaker on it that would announce that, hey folks, tonight there's a show at the local Grange Hall. Don't miss it. Lone Pine, Betty Cody, Little Abner, Bozo the Clown, come see the show. Um, they, were, they were absolute pioneers in the state of Maine, uh, bringing that kind of music and that whole scene to Maine. And then of course there was Lenny, Lone Pine Jr. came along and he uh, added to the show as well and mom was telling me that at the age of five he started singing the fifth part of harmonies. Had such a great ear and started out on the mandolin and would pick uh, French Canadian uh, jigs and reels and uh, somebody gave him a guitar, I think it was Little Abner and uh, next thing you know Lenny's probably one of the greatest guitar players in the world. And you can quote Chet Atkins on that one. As it turns out, Chet Atkins was my mom and dad's studio guitar player back in, uh, back in the 40s and 50s when they were recording for RCA. So Lenny started playing a lot of Chet stuff, like um, even though that's a um, Merle Travis song, everybody's covered it, you know, including Lenny, huh? Then do stuff like. That's the thing we're trying to preserve more than anything else with this organization is to try to keep alive these wonderful stories and and the way it all came to be. We started out in the business uh, with a lot of respect and admiration for the early pioneers of country music. If you visit the Maine Country Music Hall of Fame Museum, you will see and maybe get a liking to real country, classic country music. We'd like to see the younger people, the performers and audiences, um, having more of an appreciation of the pioneers, the people who started in this business. To raise the awareness of that and to educate people of all ages on our roots. And then to carry that on by honoring people as the Maine Country Music Hall of Fame does. It honors all kinds of country musicians, but to me, I like that they include bluegrass musicians. And there's a lot of us in here, I'm happy to say. We have a number of bluegrass people in the Hall of Fame, including people like Al Hotch, Fred Pike, Bob and Grace French, who are displayed here. And this is one of their outfits. And of course, hanging on the wall is one of Bob's banjos that he himself produced. The Rainbow Valley Folk was the name that they went under all those years. Just backbone of country and bluegrass music here in Maine. And of course, no bluegrass program would be complete in the state of Maine without 
the actual fiddle that Lucky Tim Farrell played for 42 years. Just a wonderful, wonderful man and probably the greatest fiddle player ever in the state of Maine. It's part of our heritage and also it shows people that there was a tremendous amount of talent in the state of Maine. They just do such a great job in presentation, setup. All these pictures and frames and plaques, pictures and bios right up till the present day, chronologically every single year since 1978. Slim Andrews is just wonderful guy to give you the tour and if you get the chance you really want to do it. Hopefully we'll keep inducting new Hall of Fame members, we'll keep this thing going, keep it alive. That's really the whole reason for this Hall of Fame is to pay tribute to the wonderful musicians uh, of the 30s and the 40s and the 50s that brought country music to the state of Maine. And that's why we're so proud to have a place to display the memorabilia of some of the finest musicians and performers in country music in the entire country. That is wound around my heart. 